Section 2. Simulation. SimTech Operations. The vault Tech Research Group has determined that after a long period of security, many Vault Dwellers will feel uncomfortable with the idea of returning to the outside world. The SimTech 5000 will provide a safe and reassuring return to life on the outside world. This chapter will give you a brief walkthrough of the operation of the SimTech 5000. Experienced Vault Dwellers may want to start with character creation and skip this tutorial chapter. For beginning Vault Dwellers, this tutorial will prepare you for the outside world. After starting the follow-up process on your terminal, click the New Game button from the main menu. The character selection screen will appear. For now, keep the personnel record of Max Stone displayed and select Take. This will choose Max as your character. In the future, you may want to select another character or even create your own character. The simulation will now start. After a briefing by the Vault Overseer as to your immediate task, you will appear outside the Vault Blast door. Figure 2-1, starting out right outside the Vault door. Click the INV button to open your inventory and equip yourself. Your first action should be to equip yourself with armament. All Vault Tech prepared vaults come with the latest in offensive and defensive equipment. You will be supplied with the most lethal self-protective devices available. Click the INV button on the interface bar at the bottom of the screen. The hand cursor allows you to move items around in your inventory. Click and drag the pistol to the item 1 slot. Release the mouse button. You are now armed. Move the brass knuckles to the item 2 slot. Click on the done button. You will return to the main game view. The hex cursor is a movement cursor. Move it to where you want to walk and left-click to start walking there. For now, move your mouse until the movement cursor is adjacent to the computer next to the door. Left-click once to walk there. As you are walking, you can move the movement cursor to another location. If you want to interrupt your current walk, simply left-click again. Once you are standing next to the computer, right-click once. This will change your cursor from the movement cursor to the command cursor. The command cursor is how you interact with items and objects in the environment and other people. Right-click once on the computer. This will make your character use the computer. Now look at the display window in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Try using the computer again. Figure 2-2. The movement, command, and targeting cursors respectively. Figure 2-3. Using the vault door computer. Left-click on your character a couple of times. Notice that it rotates you around. Your facing generally does not matter, as your character will turn to face whatever direction is important when needed. For now, right-click again to change the cursor back to the movement cursor. Walk to the right side of the large vault door. Now change to the command cursor. Left-click on the computer. If you are standing too far away from an object, you will automatically walk or run there when you attempt to use the object. Walk south, moving farther into the cave. Watch out for vermin. If you move too close to a rat, it will decide to attack you. After it moves up to you and bites, combat will start. Notice that the combat buttons in the lower right hand corner of the interface bar open up. It's now combat. Left click on the pistol. The cursor will change to a target, and the rat will be outlined in red. Move the target cursor over the rat. The number next to the cursor is how likely you are to hit it. It should be a pretty big number. Left-click the mouse button to shoot the rat. The closer you are to your target, the easier it is to hit them with a ranged weapon. If you miss it, or it takes the bullet but doesn't die, click on the big red button that is attached to the button with the pistol. It should change the active item from the pistol to the brass knuckles. Left click on the brass knuckles to attack with them. Target the rat again. You can continue to attack until you run out of action points. The number of action points you have remaining is displayed by the row of green lights above your weapon. The cost to use a weapon is displayed in the lower left hand side of the weapon button. When you have just a few action points remaining, end your turn by clicking on the end turn button. Everyone else involved in combat will get a chance to act, and then it will be your turn again. When your turn starts, your action points are restored. Figure 2-4, the combat button. The end turn button will end your current turn. 
The end CMB T button will attempt to stop the combat. If there are hostile creatures still involved, the fight will continue. If the rat dies, combat will end. If the rat lives after your attacks, it will get another chance to attack you. You know it is the rat's turn when the lights on the interface bar turn from green to red. Don't worry, you'll get a turn soon enough. If the rat starts to run away, you can end combat by clicking on the end combat button. Once the rat is dead, continue south through the caverns, hold down the shift key, and click on a hex to run instead of walking. If you encounter rats, use a variety of weapons to attack them. You will notice that some weapons are easier or better to use. Due to the darkness of the caves, it is difficult to hit creatures at a distance. To increase the amount of light and make it easier to see the rats, you might want to use one of your flares. Open inventory, right click to change from the hand cursor to the inventory command cursor. Left click and hold on the flare. A list of options will appear. From the top, the list of icons are examine, use, drop and cancel. Move the mouse down to the Use Action icon. Release the mouse button. The flare has now been activated. To keep it separate from the unactivated flare, it is moved to the bottom of your inventory list. Scroll down to the bottom of the list. Left click and hold on the activated flare. Select the Drop Action icon. The lit flare will be dropped to the ground. Any attacks within the zone of light are easier than in the pure darkness of the cave. Experiment. You might get hurt. If so, you need to heal yourself. Open your inventory and use a stim pack. Stim packs will heal your current hit points, but never over your maximum hit points. Another method of healing is to rest. Press Z on the keyboard. This will display the Pip-Boy clock. Click on the Until Healed line in the display. You will spend time resting until all of your hit points are restored. Another way to access the clock is to click on the PIP button on the interface, and then click on the alarm clock icon in the upper left hand corner of the Pip Boy. There are usually a couple of different ways of performing the major functions in the game. When you get into another combat, select the pistol. Right click once on the button. This will display the targeted attack symbol in the lower right hand corner of the weapon button. You will make a targeted attack. This will let you attack specific locations on your target. Clicking on a target with the cursor will display a new window. Select the location you want to attack by clicking on the name of the location. Some areas of a rat are harder to hit. However, the chance of you doing more damage or some other effect is increased by making a targeted attack. When you are tired of killing rats, you can try sneaking past them. A good sneak will let you avoid the rats. Press the Skill Dex button on the interface bar. Click on the Sneak skill. You will see Sneak printed just above the interface bar. As long as you are sneaking, the rats will have a more difficult time of seeing you. If the rat does see you, they will start combat as usual. There is no combat penalty for trying to sneak and getting caught at it. Do not run. If you run, you cannot sneak anymore. Sneak carefully around the rats. There are other skills on the skill decks that can be used. The first aid and doctor skills allow you to heal yourself and other characters in the game. All the skills except sneak require that you give a target to use the skill on. If you are hurt, open the skill decks and select first aid. The targeting cursor will turn yellow. Click on your character. Depending on how good of a medic you are, the better your first aid skill, the better you are at performing that skill, you will heal some hit point damage or do nothing. Figure 2-5, the skill decks bar. When you have explored enough of these caverns, go to the south and then to the west. The auto map, which can be accessed by clicking the map button or pressing the tab key, will show your location in the caves. You are looking for a long tunnel in the southwest corner of the caverns. When you reach the edge of the tunnel, you will see natural light. Walk into the light. This will take you to the world map. The world map is how you get around the vast outdoors. Click on the Vault 15 button on the right hand of the screen. This will start walking you to your first destination. Figure 2-6, exiting the Vault Caverns. The patch of darkness in the light is the exit grid. Walk into the exit grid to leave the map. The world is dark to start. As you explore, areas will be revealed. A green circle on the world map denotes an important area. Vault 13 has a green circle since it is so important. 
You should stop and explore any other important areas that you come across. Be careful exploring. If you spend too much time looking for new areas, you could find that the vault has run out of water. Since your mission is to save the vault from this terrible end, you should do everything you can do to avoid it. Good luck. End of section 2